I still haven't seen the Dimitri Bivol Joe Smith Jr. fight yet. I did get it up on Daily Motion and I've been meaning to watch it, but I just haven't got around to it. But a lot of people are saying that they weren't impressed by Bivol's performance, even though he won by a landslide. They're saying they feel like he should have got a Joe Smith Jr. out of there. And Dimitri Bivol has been going long in fights or the distance quite a lot recently, hasn't he? I mean, if we take a look at his record here, went 12 with Joe Smith Jr., went 12 with a very faded over the hill Jean Pascal, went 12 with Isaac Chalemba, nearly went 12 with Sullivan Barrera. So people are looking at this kind of stuff and they're saying, you know what? Dimitri Bivol is not the killer that I first thought he was. This is what people are saying. All right? I'm, I'm paraphrasing other people. I'm not saying this is necessarily the way I feel. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, skepticism which is now emerging about Dimitri Bivol, about how good this guy actually is. And I guess the entire light heavyweight division is in a state of flux at the moment, a state of limbo, because no clear definitive um, champion has emerged, right? You've got Dimitri Bivol with a belt. You've got Sergei Kovalev with a belt. You've got um, Alexander Vodsek with a belt. And you've also got, who's the other guy I'm, I'm, I'm missing? Uh, Artem Baturbiev, of course, with a belt. So you've got four champions and none of them have really staked their claim yet to be the man in the division. I mean, right now you've got Sergei Kovalev, who is the most experienced of the champions, who's got the best resume of the champions. Uh, but he's showed vulnerability, right? He was stopped by uh, Alida Alvarez. He was beaten twice by Andre Ward. So he still looks kind of vulnerable. Dimitri Bivol is unbeaten, but relatively inexperienced. He's been going the distance a lot, including against faded people who have been stopped. I mean, remember Vodsek took Chalemba out. Um, Pascal was taken out twice by Sergei Kovalev years ago. And here we have Dimitri Bivol been taken the distance by him. All right. So then you've got Alexander Vodsek, who, yeah, he looks good right now. He just stopped Adonis Stevenson. But other than Stevenson, who's he got on his record? He did beat Chalemba, but other than that, there's not really much there. He was dropped in the first round by uh, Tommy Carpensi. So there's questions about him too. And then, of course, we come to Arta Baturbiev. Baturbiev had the fright of his life against the British fighter Callum Johnson last time out. So, yeah, there's no clear top man at 175 pounds right now, which is why it's nice to hear Sergei Kovalev calling for a showdown between him and Bivo. Now, Kovalev must know deep down that his days are numbered. I mean, I think Kovalev's performance against Alida Alvarez was fantastic, by the way. To me, that's the best I've ever seen Kovalev box. But at the end of the day, he is in his mid-30s. What is he, 35, 36 now, Sergei Kovalev? He must know that he hasn't got that many years left in the game. So he's looking to fight the best and he's looking to be in the biggest fights possible. And the Dmitry Bivol fight, you know, as a fellow Russian, I'm sure it would go down very well in their home country. And I hope they would actually put it on in Russia rather than in the United States. And the reason I say that is because Russian boxing is growing, but they don't really have that many mega events in Russia. So I do think that's an area of the world where boxing could use some help right now. And when you've got two of their top fighters in Dmitry Bivol and Sergei Kovalev, it would really be a missed opportunity if they were to fight each other in the U.S., it would make far more sense in terms of growing the sport to have two of their best fighters fighting on home soil in Russia. So we'll see if that happens. Um, is there enough money in Russia to make that happen? Because you do have people like Ryabinsky, who obviously has a lot of money, but neither of these guys is with Ryabinsky. So of course, they're, you know, Sergey Kovalev's with Kathy Duva, but they now have some kind of association with top ranking Bob Arum. And uh, 
Dimitri Bivol is with the zone, right? They've got plenty of money. But again, are, do, do they want to spend their plenty of money in Russia? Or do they want to spend their plenty of money in the US? I suspect they'd want to spend it in the US. If it was somebody like a Ryabinsky, who, for example, handled uh, Povetkin's career, he's Russian through and through. He doesn't really have a foothold like that in the United States or the UK. So he was putting on his Povetkin shows in Russia, including when Povetkin fought Klitschko uh, for the world titles. So, yeah, well, anyway, I, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here about <laughs> where the fight should be. But wherever it turns out to be, if it happens, it's a great fight. Sergei Kovalev versus Dmitry Bivol, Bivol is a fight I would love to see. And I think it needs to happen sooner rather than later because I'm expecting deterioration from Sergei Kovalev. I don't think he can keep up this form for too, too long, given his age. So yeah, I'd like to see Kovalev versus Bivol sooner rather than later. And if it does happen, let's say this year, who have you guys got winning? Um, and in fact, let's uh, quote here from Dmitry Bivol. He said, I want to fight for another belt. I'm ready for a unification. And Sergei Kovalev said here on Instagram, congratulations to Dmitry Bivol on a big win. Dmitry, let's organize a fight that will thrill the entire boxing world. I'm ready. What about you? So yeah, good to hear Kovalev calling out his countrymen and hopefully these guys can actually uh, get it on in the ring. What kind of fight do you think it would be? I mean, Kovalev to me is definitely the bigger puncher of the two. Dmitry Bivol, obviously younger. I think he's quite a lot faster. He hasn't shown any vulnerability in terms of his punch resistance, Dmitry Bivol, but he hasn't really been in with any punches yet, has he? Who's Bivol been in with? Joe Smith Jr. can punch, to be fair, but I haven't seen the fight yet. Did Joe Smith Jr. land any big shots to really test Bivol's chin? Um... Other than that, you know, Pascal's not really a big puncher. He's just average kind of power. Chalemba's not a big puncher. Sullivan Barrera's not a particularly big puncher. So he hasn't really been in with any elite level punchers. So we don't know how he's going to react to Sergei Kovalev's power. Then again, the way Kovalev fought against uh, Alida Alvarez in the rematch, he's not really thinking about power too much these days. Maybe it'll be more of a chess match against Dmitry Bivol. You know, Kovalev now with Buddy McGirt is going back to more of his amateur days where he's boxing and you know keeping it long and not getting involved too much. He's not neglecting power completely. He hit Alida Alvarez with some very hurtful shots in that fight. But he's not in love with his power so much now because he realizes that got him into trouble in the past. So, yeah, what kind of fight would a Dimitri Bivol fight be? I think it would probably be a high-level boxing match with some hard punches thrown, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's a fight that went the distance. Yeah, even though I think both guys have got the power to hurt the other, I reckon a distance fight might be more likely. But who would win out in a distance fight? I, I get the impression that Sergei Kovalev is... They're both good at long range, but I think Kovalev... I suspect Kovalev has longer arms. That's how he looks to me. I mean, I haven't seen him in the ring together, but I think Kovalev's arms are probably a bit longer. And he might have, I don't know, both guys have got good jabs. Bivol's hands are really quick. I don't want to say anything here that I'm not 100% sure about. It's just a good fight. I think it will be a high-level boxing match. Um, maybe with some dramatic moments, but both guys are so well-schooled. Both guys are so skilled I don't think there will be that much or that many mistakes made, you know, and would Bivol be able to force the fight the way that um, Alida Alvarez forced the fight, the way that Andre Ward forced both fights, particularly the second one against Sergei Kovalev, because we know that's how you can get to Kovalev. If you force the fight on him, you can get to him that way. Obviously, it's easier said than done. Um, could Bivol do it? Or does he have enough skill to actually outbox Kovalev at long range? Deal with Kovalev's jab and you know take certain things away from him and impose himself on Kovalev 
just from a skill point of view rather than physically getting on the inside and beating him up. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.